what's going on it's vlog number two um this vlog is basically just going to be the story but i don't want to make it just that because it's going to be boring unfortunately i can't show you guys too much because whatever i make i give it away and the only things i'm do working on right now are like people's pants and there's nothing really interesting about that um so i guess the only thing i could show you guys is pro probably like the cushions i made for my car a few months ago yeah it's mad dark it's kind of hard to see but like these are some dope cushions i made for my for my car you already know it's team volkswagen all day and uh, this isn't really real leather, it's vinyl, which you can cop from Fabricland. So I'm, um, my sister actually paid for that for my birthday, and then my friend Andrea gave me an Amazon gift card. So that's where I bought the logos from, and then I made these two small Volkswagen cushions. Um, I got the idea from uh, from my back, because they have like the, the cushions in the back, so I wanted the leather seats to be comfortable. So that's why I made those. But yeah, other than that, like the vlog, the vlog is pretty much just going to be my story. Um, and apart from that, like I'll do tea of the day and then suit of the day. And then yeah, pretty much like the, the vlog is already going to be really long because uh, uh, my story is really long. So bear with me. Lots of my friends are team BMW, but you already know it's a Volkswagen thing. Um, I, I like BMWs, but man, it's like Volkswagen over anything. You already know. Um, but to be honest, I love old cars though. Like they're solid, they're cheaper. I'm um, just an old, I'm an MK4 guy, you already know. But yeah, it's supposed to rain tonight, which I love. Like, it's my literally my favorite weather. I love when it rains. Not really when it's cold, but yo, rain is rain. You know what I mean? When the snow comes, I'm um, not going to be a, a huge fan of that. But, um, you know, the colder weather is always nice because you get to enjoy tea more. Like, tea time is more like, you know, if it's really hot out, like, it's not. I mean, I'm still having tea, but it's like, you know, it doesn't give you that warmth and that relief from the cold. I'm not supposed to even do any cautions for Nax and then you know York man's already hit me up and now some other girls hitting me up I don't know what university she's from but you already know it's almost costume season January's coming up that's what I love about winter like the wedding alterations do get dry but then it's dance costume season so you know it's gonna be lit so hopefully I vlog you know it's gonna be interesting because you guys will get to see all these different types of costumes I might show you guys how to even cut some Today's of Today's tea of the day is uh, this chamomile tea um, so why I love this chamomile tea is because a lot of chamomile teas that you find in stores are always mixed with something but this is like i'm not sure there's probably way more that are just 100 percent pure chamomile but uh this is like i don't know i fell in love with this when my mom bought it uh, a long time ago from winners and you know she finally found this again after like a year or two or three years um from winners again so like as you can see it's 100 percent pure chamomile so i love this stuff you know what the benefits of chamomile there's numerous benefits um you know the, the thing that it's actually known for is to relieve stress and make somebody calm uh, I take it usually before bed. I used to drink it before bed every day at one point. But yeah, it does. It definitely does make you a little drowsy. It makes you calm. Makes you know, it's kind of it just gives you a serene vibe. Apart from that, I know it's also it has benefits for um, for anybody with stomach issues. Um, you know, it's all you know, it's good for that stuff too. And it has a lot more benefits from what I know. Um, so you know, I'm not gonna share. I'm not gonna get too much into it. But trust me, this brand, the English Tea Shop um, brand, it's a uh, they have really good chamomile tea. Customer time, you already know man's gonna come through, pick up their pants and things. So this is the suit of the day. Uh, so yeah, basically a lot of you already have seen this. I made this suit like ages ago when I wasn't even that professional. Um, I actually made this for my mom uh, as a surprise and I, she hates surprises and you know, she did. Unfortunately, she almost accepted it, but then she said it's not her style. Then a lot of people probably wonder why I don't really try to sell it, but it's because unfortunately the materials for the suit were so pricey. Like it was about 60 bucks just for the material and you don't really spend that much on material for a suit because the stitching is also like it was a lot of work to make this. So if I were to price those, it would have to be like around at least 100 or at least 90, you know? That's the suit of the day. Um, Again, like I said, I worked really hard on it. I'm not really in a rush to get it out. I don't want to price it for too cheap um so until then it's just you know it's just sitting over here it's usually behind the suits but people always pull it out front and say this suit looks amazing so people usually tend to love it so i'm hoping somebody will see the value and buy it for like around a hundred dollars okay let's get started also i hope my phone has enough memory i couldn't even make a, any videos i just cleared my phone a few weeks ago um so hopefully it doesn't shut down on me so yeah, I'm going to try to keep this as brief as possible. So my story basically started off in, I would say like 2012, 2013. Um, see, I'm the kind of person that if you know me, you know that I'm basically obsessed with family history. Like I, I love everything. I love studying what my ancestors, not really my ancestors, but like my grandparents and, you know, basically everyone in my family, how they used to live. I love learning about the past. So... 
you know, one night in around 2012 or 2013, I was up as usual googling my family history. Um, I know me every time I bring this up, people tell me, why don't you try AncestryTree.com? Listen, I did try that, but that does not work for brown people. You know I mean, I tried that and I seen the commercials and I tried to use it and nothing came up. You know what I mean, so I'm not really sure what Ancestry Tree is on. I'm not sure. But I used to Google my parents' name, my grandparents' names, in the hope that I would find something. I'm not sure, like, what made me think that I would find something, but it's, subhanAllah, like, it's crazy. Like, it's, you know, it's almost as if it was meant to be because I was Googling my grandparents' names and that one night, and I believe 2012, um, I found a website that mentioned my grandma's name and then it had my grandpa's name um, from my dad's side. You know, and I already know a lot about my mom's side because all my mom's family is over here in Canada. Um, but I don't really, I didn't really know too much about my dad's side. My parents do not really like discussing family history. So, you know. So anyways, this website, like, it was, at, you know, there was so much on it. Like, I didn't want to jump to conclusions because, you know, I'm not the type of person that instantly starts believing something then spreading it. Um, you know, I like to look at something and make sure I know what I'm talking about. So I went on the website and, you know, I started looking at all this stuff and it had so much information and I didn't believe it. I'm like, I can't be this lucky to receive this website full of information. Anyways, fast forward, the men the website basically mentioned like my relatives from my grandma's side. Um, and they mentioned that they had been tailors for literally like centuries and centuries. So I'm just getting messages right now. Uh, let go. Anyways, so I started, it mentioned that my grandma's family used to be tailors from, for centuries, and the oldest relative whose name was on there was Railaku Minhas. Um, our family's Minhas, by the way, which I know a lot of Indians are Minhas too. Um, so anyways, yeah, so I mentioned this, this person named Railaku Minhas, who was born in the 1690s. Um, he used to work in Kashmir, they used to work in, they used to uh, basically, I, I don't really understand, but they used to push logs down the river, and they used to go to the town Sealkot, which is where I'm from now. Um, so basically what happened was eventually Raila Kuminhas decided to move to Sealkor and there he started his own timber business. And then he had two sons and from one of those sons uh, was my ancestor who was who went by the title Haji Minhas. Um, so now Haji Minhas was, you know, he decided that basically the timber profession wasn't really for him uh, and he moved to the he moved to another area in Sialkot known as Rangpura, which is where I spent my first year of, of my life. So that's where my family is still situated in Pakistan. So basically, when, when Haji Minhas moved to Rangpura, there was a big... Um, the tailoring business is big in Rangpura. Anyways, even in Sialkot, people who know Pakistan, Sialkot is the place where you get sporting goods made, where the stitching is. It is a city full of talent. I love my city so much, even though I haven't, I haven't been back home since 2000. Uh, you know, but... I pray that I get to go back. I miss my relatives, um, you know, and I want to see all these amazing places. I love Sealko with my heart. Uh, it's such a talented place, you know, even the airport that was just built, the people of the city funded and built that airport themselves. Uh, from what I've heard, there was no government, you know, there was no big government funding. Um, so anyways, so anyways, fast forwarding. So I look at all these, I found pictures from the 1930s. Um, there was basically what astonished me the most was there was pictures of this man named Mia Atta Muhammad um, and he was he used to make suits for the British apparently and he used to he even made suits for actors like Raj Kapoor which is a big Bollywood actor of that time. So when I when I dug deep into this website of course I spent hours reading it it was like four in the morning and I kept reading it and it basically mentioned that this this person Mia Atta Muhammad was the grandfather of my grandma. Um, and it had a picture of him and that picture like ever since then I've cherished that you know I've cherished that picture I actually have it framed up here in the customer room many of you might have seen it I'll show you it real quick so it's hard to see because of the glass there's quite a bit of glare so that's my great great grandfather Mia Atta Muhammad and his wife Hussein Bibi and he he was you know like he was like probably the last uh, most famous tailor in our family and this picture was taken in the year I believe 1932 so yeah So anyways, once I read about that, like it blew my mind away because, and by the way, this website, many of you ask where it came from. It's actually a tribute. My dad's cousins in Scotland made it as a tribute to their father. And I believe this, um, this great uncle of mine or my grandma's brother, he was like the one that was tracking. Like he, I, I think he had a passion for this stuff. I mean, I believe he took all these old pictures Like he was into photography. Um, 
you know, so I feel like I could have related to him. Unfortunately, he passed away many years ago. Um, so that's why the website was made in tribute. So to his kids, you know, you guys did a great job. You guys helped me. Just, if you're watching this, I don't know, maybe you are. Um, you guys are the reason why, you know, I discovered all this family history and I decided to pursue what I do right now. So anyways, I don't, like I said, I don't want this to prolong too much, so bear with me. Um, so basically, after I found out about Mia Atta Muhammad, I remembered that as a kid, I used to take my mom's or my grandma's sewing kit. I'm not picking that up, man. But yeah, so I used to take my mom's sewing kit and I used to stitch random things. I did this a few times when I was younger and I recall one time I took these tools and one was like something that rolled and all I had to do was cut these pants and make them into shorts. And I was acting like I was such a tailor. I don't know why. Nobody had ever mentioned that our family. I never knew that there was a single tailor in our family. And I was just, you know, I had a passion for it. And it's it's unusual, unusual for a young boy to be sewing, you know. So when I discovered this website, it felt to me like this was like something that was in my blood, like it was meant to be. Anyways, fast forward from there, um, you know, maybe some days passed by. Um, I started to learn how to hand sew. My mom knows how to hand sew. She can't use a sewing machine, but she knows how to hand stitch. So she helped me, you know, learn how to do that. And in those days, I was I was basically taking beans that we had in the in the shelves. And my mom said to use that as filling to make like, you know, we made like a, those beanie things. Anyways, my friend Angela, I don't know how this happened, but basically she suggested, like, she wanted a phone pouch. So I was like, Angela, come on. I'm like, I remember saying, like, how could I stitch a phone case for you, you know? Anyways, I stitched a pouch. I filled it with beans. The first one, it didn't, a phone wouldn't have fit in it, you know. It was kind of unsuccessful, but it looked so amazing and it looked vintage. And now my friend, who's also known as my daughter, Sam Nolay, she still has that. So hopefully you take care of it because that's the first ever pouch I stitched. Anyways, I made my friend Angela's. From there, I started making more and more and more. I was at Heart Lake that time in high school, and I started making tons of these pouches. I made a business called Unique Pouches, um, which hasn't ended. You know, I haven't been working on it, but that was my business back in high school. I went to Sheridan College. My friends like Hannah Davis, Munif, Jasne, these three friends joined my team. You know, we, like, it was crazy. It, it was my dream. It wasn't their dream, but they became a part of my dream. And, you know, they helped me push the business forward. You know, shout out to my friend Hannah. He used to spend hours and hours hand sewing, you know, these pouches. And we used to make like 5 or $10 for the whole thing. So $2 used to go to each of us. And then $1 used to go into the business funds. And in the end, I, I, from what I remember, Hannah gave me all her money. And she was like, you put this in the business fund. So, you know, friends like friends like these are, you know, one of the biggest reasons why I am where, you know, they helped me like so much in my journey. Anyways, Unique Pouches was really successful. We carried on in 2014, I believe 2015. But eventually, you know, I started thinking my, to myself, um, you know, I started thinking to myself, like, this isn't what my relatives did. They didn't make, you know, laptop cases, phone cases. They used to stitch like clothing. They were cloth merchants. So, you know, I thought to myself, and the money was like, it was very little money for a lot of intensive labor. Um, so basically, I, I decided, like, I was already fixing some people's clothes. So I decided that I would, you know, start working on clothes. And my aunt from Denmark, who's like a really, you know, she loves sewing. She's so good at making clothes. She was visiting Canada. So that was a perfect opportunity. Both of us got busy. I already had bought my first sewing machine, which my mom, you know, I helped pay for it. But my mom, you know, it was an expensive machine from the Singer store in, you know, in Shoppers World. That's the only place I go to buy, buy sewing machines. So we bought the sewing machine from over there. And yeah, you know, things just got cracking. My aunt started helping me how to stitch. My first ever, you know, garment that I made was probably a korta. So I made like a shalwar kameez and then like a korta pajama. I started, you know, but it was like the way my aunt taught me. You know, I think I might need a few videos for this. I have to, this is very like, I have to talk about a lot. But basically the way I am today and why I, you know, I already had OCD. But the way my aunt taught me, who I call my ustad, by the way, the way she taught me is if, you know, when I used to st I'd be stitching and if one stitch would go sideways and, you know, I would just continue. I just, you know, but my aunt would, would tell me to stop and she would make me unstitch what I did. And sometimes I used to get so like it was so frustrating. And, you know, there were so many long nights where we she was only here for a few weeks. But sometimes it got so, you know, like it was a headache, you know. 
And, you know, sometimes I still wonder why she was so hard on me. But now I appreciate that so much, especially when I see other people who stitch and they don't have these same values. They don't have that eye for perfection. So, you know, I owe this to my aunt, my Ustad Eram Rahman, um, who lives in Denmark. That's my Ustad. That's my teacher. And I always tell her, like, if you come to Canada, our business can be booming. Like, you're, you know, you're the one that taught me. You know, you should be out here. Anyways, guys, I really don't want to get sidetracked. Um, which I have, I guess I'm, I'm not really being sidetracked. It's just a long story. But anyway, so from that, you know, my aunt left. And then after that, actually, I started my business, Chukdai Tailoring, which many of you guys know today. It's just my last name in tailoring. Unique was different. The reason Unique Pouches was named Unique was because my first name, Farid, in Arabic means unique or something odd or something unusual, which describes me. So I named it Unique Pouches. Chuktai tailoring was more, it was based on my family. By the way, not only my grandma's side, but my grandpa's side were tailors. The thing about my grandpa is his family had came from Gujarat a few years before. So they, they haven't been in Seattle from centuries, but they've been tailors for ages too. The only thing is I didn't find a website, you know, about my aunt, grandpa's family. Um, but, you know, I know like my great grandfather's name and all that, but I don't really have any pictures of them. Um, but they were both, you know, both of the families were tailoring in Seattle. So anyways, after my aunt left, you know, I decided to start a business, Chuktai Tailoring. Um, and that was in 2014. And, uh, you know, the first year was, you know, obviously it was very dry. Uh, my friends used to give me an order every now and then, but I mean, it was going very slowly. Anyways, from there, maybe the second year, I'm not sure. I was basically in the car going to my friend Sean's birthday dinner. And I remember all these things, bro. Sorry, I'm starting to get allergies. But I remember all these things. It was in, I was in the car with my friend Aveline and uh, and another friend. And, you know, we were we were basically just, like, headed to Boston Pizza. And I got a call from because I had a Kijiji ad. And at this point, people were random. People started coming to me for alterations. You know, there was times where I would mess up, but I would learn from my mistakes. I started building more and more customers. My family started seeing that this business was actually going somewhere. Anyways, I get this call. It's from a girl. Um, I'm not going to say her name. I don't really like, you know, I don't think she will even watch this. Um, but basically, she was part of the dance team Shale McToronto from one of the teams. And she said, you know, we, we need a tailor to get dance costumes made. Um, I'm not sure at this point if I'd even done dance costumes now. Like, I'm known from, you know, because I do dance costumes. I did them for York Knacks, Waterloo Knacks, Wireson Knacks, Shale McToronto. I made costumes recently for the choreographer Rishmi Chitram um from Rashmi network um but basically yeah like i just you know she called and i you know i just grabbed the opportunity i believe the first order was like about um they basically had to make a whole bunch of pants or pajamas just simple white pants uh for their dance team for i believe the mississauga team um so i went to take measurements at the you know in brampton and i made them you know i made them all these pants and you know i'm not going to get too much into that but that was my first order for shiamuk and if you don't know shiamuk um basically the founder he has teams in every country and like in canada they're in vancouver they're in toronto there's tons of teams and the founder shiamuk daver uh he he choreographs for bollywood so he's he's worked with like everyone you know i think he's working with varun right now maybe um he sees shadow khan all the time so this was big for me you know this was huge like making costumes i made for them these were the retro style costumes a few of these uh the girl ones a few of them were made by my seamstress sherry so shout out to sherry um you know but other than that yeah like i try to do all my work myself um but you know sometimes i need help and it's always good to get help from other people but yeah that was one of the orders i did for them later because they had became valuable customers Anyways, that costume order was really big for me. Um, after that, you know, I never imagined myself working with dance costumes, but, you know, suddenly I started doing them for different teams. And then I got really into it. Like, it got so interesting making all these dance costumes. Um, my biggest order was probably from Waterloo Nax. I did that in 2016. Um, for 2017, I did York Nax and Ryerson Nax. Um, but I made costumes for, like, so many of these teams. Like, it's crazy now to even think about um, but yeah, like a lot of people that might be watching this know me because they've only came over here to Chick Thai Tailoring to get dance costumes made for me. So it's crazy, you know? Anyway, so yeah, you know, my business just started. This is the third year right now. Um, but even the second year was really slow. I was working. I was working at Kitchen Stuff Plus until March. Um, but, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to make this a religious vlog. But, you know, the facts, you know, the fact, facts are facts. Basically, this April, I decided for the first time ever... 
to, you know, sit down and pray that my, you know, after Salah, I pray that my business gets more busy. And April ended up being my busiest month without, like, I don't think I made any dance team costumes. So there was no big order. But there were so many people coming in that my revenue went like, you know, I wasn't even making that much money uh, for my job. So, you know, after that, like, since now, there's months that are very slow. There's months that are very, you know, busy. Um, but, you know, and, and then sometimes, like, uh, for people who watch my Snapchat, you know that my customers can sometimes give me the hardest time. I could spend hours and hours stitching something. And my family sees me doing this. And then they see me, you know, having to argue with customers. And, you know, it can get so hectic sometimes to the point where I feel like I hate what I do. But the fact that I have such a passion for it and the fact that, you know, I don't want to let this legacy go. I feel like I'm carrying a torch. Basically, this, you know, there's so many different facts I forget to mention. But I, I don't know if I mentioned this. Um, but basically, tailoring was, was in our family for centuries. But it's basically from what I know. I don't really know of any anybody who's tailoring in our family right now maybe back home there's a few but i don't think so like even back home you know a lot of my cousins and stuff they have really nice jobs they work in offices mashallah they're doing it big so you know my grandfather wasn't a tailor my dad's not a tailor so when i found this out you know like people were carrying this tradition on since the 1700s and for it to die like me being me i could not let this die so even if i hate doing what i do some weeks you know i want to give up so badly um, but I'm not letting this go, and I'm going to continue to carry this torch. You know, who knows? People say I go through phases. You know, many of you know I used to I used to spit. I used to be a rapper. I used to do short films. I used to do crazy things. And listen, don't judge me. I know there was an era when everybody was a rapper. I was not one of those. See, I used to write lyrics when I was a little kid. I recorded and did music for six years. When I started, it was horrible. My last few tracks were really, like, they got ratings. And my friends were the harshest critics, and I respect that. He used to tell me to my face, like, yo, this sounds whack. This is what you're doing good. And that's the that those are the kind of friends you need in your life. Anyways, you know, just getting back to the story. I'm doing, I'm still doing what I'm doing. I'm not working right now. I'm just a tailor. Uh, many of you who are watching this probably um, know me because, you know, I am your tailor. Um, and yeah, pretty much that's about it. Um, you know, I might share more of my story. Um, you know, people tell me like, I don't, you know, I don't try to glamorize my story. I could make it. People say, you can say that you have 300 of year, years of tailoring in your family. People say like, post your stories on your Instagram. To be honest, I'm probably not going to be sharing these vlogs on my business pages because if you notice, I don't post anything personal on my business pages. People don't even know. People who contact my page for the first time can't even imagine they're talking to a 22 year old, uh, young male, you know, and, uh, you know, but. To be honest, I don't. When they come over, they see my work. They they know that you know I really, you know, I have a thing for what I do and I'm good at it. Anyway, shout out to everybody who actually listened to the story. Uh, it is pretty. I guess it's pretty interesting. And like, I don't really like. I don't know, man. I don't have this time to be going over this with people who come by for work or you know even my friends. Like, it's a long story, you know. So that's why you know this vlog is a good. It's a good place to just you know go to if you really want to find out why I do this. Because it is like people do question it. It's like, you know, what made you become a tailor? Like you're 22. Um, also, I apologize for the videos being completely square. They're not like that. But, you know, I'm editing off iMovie on my phone. And it's changing everything to like a, a square shape. It's actually like, I don't know why it's doing that. It is annoying. It looks like I have my camera right in my face, which, you know, is not the case. Um, but yeah, look out, for, look out for the next vlog. There's interesting stuff coming. These first two vlogs weren't really even, you know, I wasn't really showing like you know, clothing, fashion, fabric, all the stuff the channel's about. These are both just kind of like introduction vlogs. Um, so yeah, shout out to everybody who's already with the channel. Make sure you subscribe, um, leave me a comment, you know, like whatever all that YouTube stuff, man. You guys already know what it runs. Uh, free the Taylor, peace out.